But joining us is Clive and Bundy. Haven't had him on in a few months since the historic standoff with the feds where, where Clive and his family led more than a thousand men, women, and children, dozens of them on horseback, up against paramilitary, militarized BLM, pointing live guns at them, telling them, don't cross the line or we'll shoot to get on to his property that he's been on since the 1870s with his family. The feds simply declared uh, and ran off the other 34 families that came on the same wagon train in the 1870s. They declared that they all just needed uh, to leave and, and couldn't use the land anymore, put grazing fees on the land that the government had grabbed, the open range, impossible to pay. So Cliven didn't pay those since the 90s because he said he would if the state government levied it, but the feds had no jurisdiction, which I agree with, and he's had court cases on that. And the issue here is you've got 85% of, of some of those western states, actually Nevada's almost 90%, that's where he's based, that are federal. Another 5-6% is state. You're talking less than 5% that's privately owned. I mean, this isn't America. And then, oh, if you're the Chinese and want to come in and build solar farms, go ahead. Or you want to do whatever, that's fine. Or you want to come, you're a foreign company, fine. It's the shutdown of American industry. We told you beef prices were going to increase. They're all they're at record levels now because they're harassing farmers and ranchers across the country under Obama's uh, rural council under Homeland Security that's designed to use environmental rules and fines and fees to shut down agriculture and, quote, rewild America under Agenda 21, the U.N. Cloward and Piven style plan to bankrupt this country. So that's why we stood with Clive and Bundy on the principle of what he's doing is right and trying to get people to be self-sufficient again. And so he joins us to give us updates on what happened since that historic uh, situation, one of the only times the feds have backed down in the last hundred years. And it's because they knew what a PR disaster it'd be shooting men on horseback, trying to go get their cattle that the feds had, who they were basically killing uh, by uh, not giving them any water, dehydration. So, Clive and Bundy, thanks for coming on with us. Well, thank you. Uh, it's a privilege to come on with you, and it's a privilege to talk to the American people one more time. You know, my question would be, uh, America, the free, the land, the opportunity, what, where is that? Uh, basically, uh, we've lost that. If we have that anywhere, we got it on Bundy Ranch right now, and that's good news. Well, you're right, and, and even Rick Perry's weighed in uh, on the fact that the BLM is claiming tens of thousands of acres that is privately owned on the Oklahoma and Texas side of the Red River. Well, yeah, they're not satisfied to own the, uh, almost 90% of the state of Nevada and over 60% of the western states. they got to go back across the Mississippi River and uh, monkey with we the people back there. What's wrong with them? They just have an instinct to take over. They also have existential envy. They don't like people that run their own lives and are self-sufficient. A bureaucrat, a bean counter, is fundamentally sick at their stomach by people that are self-sufficient. You, know, you know, they call people like you, Clive, and wild. And they say that they need to get everybody domesticated. Yeah, they call me a welfare rancher and also, also, but, you know, I work every day, uh, my family works every day to produce uh, an edible uh, commodity for we the people of America and we the people of the world. Now, what do they do? Do they just cause us trouble? They cause every industry trouble? What what service is these bureaucracies and bureaucrats? What what do they do for America? Uh, you know, we can have a government shutdown and we don't even miss them. I, I'm... I'm saying it's time that we better start cleaning these out, this bureaucracy out, because they have the guns now. They have their armies, and that's what come after me and my uh, uh, friends and family was uh, was bureaucracy army with guns, a military tactic, and they were basically uh, out to kill. And uh, that was that's that's the truth. That's uh, that was what was happening here in southern Nevada at Bundy's Ranch. Well, they also have Snopes that was started by Soros uh, uh, groups and, and White House run groups lying and saying there's no connection to the Chinese government and their solar company and no connection to Harry Reid. Um, Harry Reid's people got very upset. They even tried to get us off the radio 
in Vegas. That was unsuccessful. We're on live uh, right now. Why would uh, why would Harry Reid want to, to get you off the radio, or why would Harry Reid want to get me off the land if he wasn't making money, I guess is what it's all about. Uh, it definitely isn't his uh, duty as a senator of the United States to shut your radio down or shut my uh, range operation down. He has to have another motive, and it has to be with something to do with money. Well, who has all the money in the world? China must have well, most of it. Exactly. Well, they think everybody's dumb, so they don't know that his son has been in the Las Vegas Review Journal. His son is on the board with the company. And no, the, the solar panels aren't going to be on your land, your open range land that you have a lodial title to on record under state law in the U.S. Constitution, under continuous use and being the first people there as stakeholders. Well, what they want to do is even if the solar panels are not on my land, what they want to do is use my land for mitigation. I was about to say, you're another endangered species. Exactly. What they do is, uh, is, is they play this game on these politicheck and fact-check sites. They go, Alex Jones and Infowars.com claim that the Chinese government is going to build on Clive and Bundy's land. Well, A, it's not his land, because they know people don't understand the difference between land that you have a right to use, open range, versus what you completely own. And then they tell the second line. They go, no, the solar panels are 50 miles away. But in the documents on the BLM website, it says your land is set aside as the easement for them to be able to use that. So they play this game. The point is, your land's being taken as part of this deal, and it's in the newspaper two years ago, before this all started. It's on the BLM website till they took it down, but it's on the Google Wayback Machine. But they count on readers and viewers being dumb and then thinking we're making that up, Cliven. I know that. And what's really happening here is they want some area of this uh, Nevada desert to build a solar panel, panel, and then they want to kill the tortoises on that area. Now, I say kill. Kill the tortoises on the desert, the native, and that's their native habitat. Now, in order to uh, justify that kill, or the way they call it a take, and to justify that take, they say, well, we're going to reserve some habitat over here on Bundy's Ranch for those tortoises. But really what's happening there is not only Bundy dude and his cattle that they want off that land, they want you off that land so you can't use it for recreation or, or hunting, fishing, or any other purpose. Drill a bill of oil well or a water well, uh, easement for a, uh, a utility. They want to lock, lock up and lock out, and that's not only what they want. They want policing power with unlimited power, unlimited power over this land. And not only Bundy was right, they're using this tactic all over the western United States, and they're uh, basically the western United States, but all over the United States. They want to lock up and uh, lock out people off the land, and they want unlimited power. Policing power is what they're after. Well, let me expand on that. Uh, this this uh, report is up on Infowars.com. It's out of the New York Times. Some of the news I haven't gotten to today, but I wanted to cover it with you. Obama pursuing climate accord in lieu of treaty and says he will act outside of Congress with the United Nations and will implement it through the executive branch. So I want to be clear, and that's red-linked on Drudge, and it should be red-linked on Drudge. That we should do a whole article on Infowars.com. That is our government and Obama saying he gets authority from the United Nations. My first film about the West, America Destroyed by Design, is more important 18 years later than it was when I made it. Obama pushes for UN climate rules without Congress. I'm going to say that again. And those climate rules will shut down what's left. Only America and Europe have to do these rules. It will make everything that we've got left move to Europe. I mean, move out of Europe, move out of the U.S., and go south of the border or go to China or India. And it won't even help those people there. Clive well, and Bundy? Yeah, there's a... I mean, that, I, you just can't understand how big this is when you get talking about the United Nations, U.N., I mean, you know, this uh, this environmental movement, it's it's basically Agenda 21, I guess you could say it, where they want to uh, clear out all of the land from the people and, and give it back to nature, supposedly, and, 
and the animals, well, that's not really what they want. Again, they want to, they want to take the vast areas, basically through the Midwest now. They want that corridor to go from Canada to Mexico, take out the central part of uh, America, and basically eliminate people and construction, agriculture, everything. I mean, how silly can you be? What what kind of human being would think that way? Why shouldn't we go in there and develop it, increase it, and better it for mankind and multiply and replenish? I mean, isn't that what we're sort of commanded to do? Clive and Bundy is our guest. Harry Reid famously said that anyone out there at the ranch, uh, even peacefully demonstrating for the First Amendment, was a domestic terrorist. We forget that people were roughed up, beaten up, tasered, including your son on video, being nonviolent by paramilitary uh, land grabbers, BLM, people masquerading as federal agents. They're not even that. They're UN agents under U UN Treaty UNESCO. And now all this is out in the open uh, that people got mad when they saw that. And, and, and the globalists should know as they push, they're only going to create more opposition. Well, they know that. They want to start a civil war in this country. That's why it's important for the feds and others to be smart enough to not play along with this, but we've got to be uh, smart enough as well. Uh, but what do you make of Harry Reid saying, A, you're a domestic terrorist, basically, and B, that there will be a judgment day, that, that there will be a response, very cryptically. Uh, do you expect the empire of the Chai Coms and Harry Reid uh, and the land grabbers, the locust, do you expect uh, the parasites to strike back? Well, you know, Harry Reid did, uh, didn't even only say it was uh, domestic uh, terrorists. He said we were violent domestic terrorists. That's their mark of us pretty bad. In other words, would be somebody that was going to bomb the city or do something. I don't know what a violent domestic terrorist does. But definitely it's worse than just a domestic terrorist. And they didn't, they, uh, Harry didn't just earmark uh, Clive and Bundy. He marked all of those who stood, the thousands that stood with Clive and Bundy as the violent domestic terrorists. And what that's really, that earmark uh, of being a, a terrorist puts on us and puts throughout the American thinking, well, okay, now we've got a terrorist in America, I guess we should get rid of him, then we can take and shoot him, we can bomb him, we can incarcerate him, we can do anything we want. I guess we could even cut his head off if that's what needs to be done. He is a, a, a terrorist towards the United States of America. And that's the title that Harry Reid put up on We the People here at Bundy's Ranch. And by the way, we warned everyone when they passed the NDAA, when Obama signed that back in 2011, uh, on the last day of the year at night on New Year's Eve, when he said he wouldn't sign it, turned out his office wrote it, uh, where they could secretly arrest and disappear Americans. Well, look, they can put on paper that they're allowed to barbecue children on the White House lawn. I'm not going along with it. I don't care what their globalist tin badge says. The fact that they've gone so far down the road to tyranny shows that they're completely illegitimate. Congress has a 6% to 7% approval rating. And the police they're trying to put in these armored vehicles are starting to wake up uh, to what's happening. Uh, and, and so the feds are coming saying they're going to save us from the paramilitary police that they set up. I mean, it, I don't see any way the establishment's going to be able to win this, Cliven, unless they stage false flags. Uh, and blame the liberty movement, and I don't think that'll even work as well. I mean, how, do, how does your gut, what does your gut tell you is going to happen in this country? Where do you see this country in 10 years? Well, uh, let me talk just a little bit more about what happened out here. Let's take my son, Dave, that they uh, basically, he was taking pictures of uh, them uh, moving the cattle, not even in the area where they're getting it, but would go on to take pictures of the trucks uh, that had the cattle in it. And they uh, uh, ganged up on him and their thugs with their high-powered uh, Army military-type equipment. And they uh, uh, crushed his head into the gravel and, and arrested him and hauled him off and uh, took him and put him in their jails and interrogated him. And uh, after two days, they turned him out on the street, just like a, just like a thug would probably take uh, somebody that they're going to rape and they use him up, use her up or whatever, and then they just turn her out on the street. That's the way they treated my son. And, you know, why would a human being or a government act that way? The, the only thing they can be doing is trying to tell we the people that they have unlimited power and authority and they can do any damn thing they want 
and we better not resist or say anything about it. That's the attitude. Cliven Bundy is our guest. Uh, it, it's called being dishonorable, and people think that's tough nowadays to act like a thug. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? But we do have that clip, in case you're a new listener in Dallas, of Senator Harry Reid a few months ago saying the people out there at the Bundy Ranch, most of them demonstrating for the First Amendment, because the feds were saying basically in half the county you couldn't even stand on the sidewalk with a sign. They would come up and assault you, uh, that, that that was terrorism. And they got video of one guy aiming his AR-15 D down over the overpass towards the feds, which I think was stupid and very provocative. Uh, and then they imply everyone's a terrorist because of that. What about the police aiming their 223s at my reporters in broad daylight, who they even knew by name day after day in Ferguson? Is that terrorism? Let's go to that clip of Harry Reid. Here it is. So these people who hold themselves out to be patriots are not. They're nothing more than domestic terrorists. And I think that we are a country that people should follow the law. And what went up in Mesquite is not very good. I repeat, what went on up there is domestic tourism. Okay, domestic terrorism, not tourism. That was the Las Vegas Review Journal video. So there you go. All of this is for the American people, and that's admitted. And so they claim that the rendition, the torture, the NDAA, the checkpoints, the NSA was all for Al-Qaeda, which is now known as IS and our government gave weapons to and is now fighting again. Because it's not our government. It's criminal special interest at every level who are robbing the country seven ways to Sunday. There are secret death panels for veterans where they have operable cancers with 95% success rates and they just don't give them the surgery and they die and then the whore media spins that when the alternative media breaks it it's going on nationwide as mistakes were made no the government and criminal interest have gotten away with bloody murder and somebody finally stood up to them and the controlled media acted like we were devils for daring to know the law and what had happened out there Final comments, Clive and Bunny, in the two minutes we've got left, sir. Well, you know, the question is, who is the criminals here? Was it the federal bureaucracy that pointed the guns to we the people? Or was it we the people who standing up for our liberty and freedoms and our agency, our constitution, our state sovereignty? Was we wrong or were they wrong? Where in, the, in this constitution, where in this government does it allow an army to come against we the people? And why would a, a senator, I say, you brought your army here, how would, how could you justify bringing a, a, a militia, not a militia, a military army against we the people? And you know, I made the statement, this will never happen in America again, and yet we see it sort of repeating itself across the country. I don't know when we're going to stop it. We're going to have to stand up for uh, uh, our state sovereignty. Our local sheriff's got to wake up, and uh, and we the people, we hey, it's our fault. We have allowed this to happen. We got to stop it now. Well, don't forget, Judge Head in Lubbock two years ago said they needed armored vehicles to fight a UN takeover. I'm not even so much against the locals if they're patriots having things to defend the population from drug cartels or whatever. I'm against federal armaments against the people. That's unconstitutional. Here it is out of the desert news. Representative Stewart seeking to demilitarize federal regulatory agencies. The congressman from Utah says he wants to demilitarize the feds. That's more like it. And that's what's coming out of this from Chris Stewart, Republican Utah. The InfoWars crew absolutely loves coffee because we love being awake. And I am somewhat of a connoisseur of coffee. So many times you go to a restaurant or even to a coffee shop and the coffee tastes like garbage. And in all the different coffees I've tried, my favorite is grown in the high mountains, in shade, Arabica, on the border with Guatemala in southern Mexico by the Chiapas farmers. I make sure we've done the research. I make sure it's the very best product that we can offer you when I put my name on it. 
And I believe, and it's my taste, so you may differ, that this is the best coffee in the world from Southern Mexico. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, 100% organic, Arabica shade grown. And then we have the Immune Support 100% organic coffee infused with a special type of mushroom known to boost the immunity. This coffee is seriously so smooth. I normally have to douse my coffee with cream and sugar and cinnamon and all kinds of tasty treats, but this, I drink this black. It is so good. Well, that's why I like it, is that it has a kick, it has really good caffeine in it, it has a good clean wake up that lasts for a long time, doesn't give me a headache, but it's so smooth, it's so delicious. Just try it out for yourself, I'm telling you. This is my favorite coffee. We went through a lot of trouble to bring you this. Just try it, and I think you'll be hooked like we are here at InfoWars. Well, folks, find out for yourself and support the information war today. It's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139.